So the inheritance system just becomes more complicated the more one knows about it, apparently. Amelia and me were trying very hard to work it out, though. It was difficult and hurt my brain. In the late afternoon, I went to the square market to execute my plan for getting into the castle. It worked brilliantly. So at night, I was sneaking around in there. Frustration almost got the upper hand when... This is Nidak, my adventure, written down in a better way than I can tell it. Episode 37, Laws and Rules It made sense in Nidak's head, and even more so as he explained it to Melia. No one else could have any of the lines but members of the Isho family. Nedak didn't have siblings. Kradak and Stedem didn't have children if they hadn't lied about it. Theoretically, Yodak could have had children after his disappearance, but that was a detail Nedak ignored for now. The male voice from the cave spoke about Not taking the effort of transporting the slurp. Better to preserve the power and said, Hold on. There had been no other way to enter or exit the cave. He must have been talking about skipping. The man's voice, the one the woman had referred to as Clapper, had to be Yodek. Your uncle tried to kill you. Melia looked sad when she asked her question. I... Yes, I suppose he did. The day before... Nedak had given Melia a brief summary of the events which led to her appearance in the mansion. It doesn't make sense, though, does it? If he works now for the same order who wants to kill me because they want the power, why didn't he remain on the throne? He could have had all of the squares, triangles and lines years ago. And if he had kids then... The first one would have inherited it all when turning twenty-eight. Even if he hadn't had the throne, wouldn't it happen anyway? Or would that depend on when I was born? This whole inheritance system is too complicated. It most certainly is. But I do not believe it matters right now. What matters is that you are the current real heir. And they, whomever they are... Do not want that. Are we still doing the plan as we have decided last night? It was very late, and we did not know all the details. Nerek smiled. She liked this woman. Fluetza, her real name was Fluetza. Much better as an active part of the team than servant. It somewhat relieved the pressure Nerek felt on her shoulders. Yes, still the same. It's crazy, but I like it. It will work. Knowing that one of my enemies is my uncle doesn't change anything. It's even better to be aware of it. Too bad he won't be able to teach me. You are sure about breaking the laws here? It was one of the first things I studied. From the moment I knew this was to be my new home, I asked Madame Ishaud to teach me all of the laws and rules. I didn't want to be locked up for something easily avoided. Smart move. And good for me. Glad you did. Let's do this. It felt good to wear trousers again. The breeches Nidak wore stopped midway her shin, not on her knees like most other men's. The puffiness around her hips was perfect to hide her obviously female curves. Instead of white stockings, hers were red, like a little wink to what she was about to do. The jacket, shirts and undershirts were loose enough to not feel trapped, unlike the upper part of dresses. Her complete outfit differed enough from the local males to exclaim her as a foreigner. The large floppy hat on her head obscured some of the white curly wig she wore to hide her long hair. Wigs weren't as much in fashion here, but people didn't give her the side eye for it either. 
She would have liked it even better if she had her halberd on her. But there had been no point in carrying it along, as the guards might be taking it off her when they caught her. She did have two small knives hidden in her sleeves. If Melia had it right, the guards wouldn't pat her down to remove any hidden weapons she might be carrying. Not for the kind of offence she was about to do. The square market buzzed with activity. All of Parallelo's performers had gathered here, filling the square with colourful balls being tossed about, swirling capes and sparkling outfits. All of that drew a large crowd, most of whom stared wide-eyed around them. For many of them it was one of the rare times they were able to see these acts all at once. Guards roamed around, hands swiveling to catch possible pickpockets and other lawbreakers. A pair of the blue liveried guards strolled in Nadek's direction. The perfect moment. Time to get arrested. She lifted the red apple out of her pocket and took a bite, nearly eating her fake moustache and dripping juice on her short beard. Chewing slowly, she made sure to keep the apple up high. The shocked faces of passers-by reminded her of Winnie's reaction in the cave when she'd explained strawberries to him. She chuckled at the same time one of the guards held her wrist while the second one grabbed her other arm. Sir, red food is forbidden in parallel. Under the law, we have to take you into custody. You are not from around here, we assume. Of course I am not. She tried to modify her voice to make it sound more like a man. It made her sound slow-witted. Can you not squeeze quite so hard? Thank you. What is this nonsense but red food? Let me just dispose of it. I'll quickly eat it and pretend it never happened. You go on with your day and I go on with mine. And that is it. No need to keep me captive. She managed to give a little shake to her voice. We cannot do that, sir. Do not worry. I will personally make sure they treat you right. Though, you will have to spend the night in the dungeon. In the morning, you will be given an induction to the Parallelian laws. The guard plucked the apple from her hand with the help of a handkerchief. Nedak almost snorted at his unwillingness to touch the apple. Ridiculous! This is preposterous, Nedek exclaimed. You are locking me up for eating an apple. How was I to know of such a rule? Can I not be left free with the promise of going to that induction in the morning? Please, sir, let us not make this difficult. Both of the guards each grabbed one of her arms and moved forward. If you do not cooperate, we shall have to manacle you. The law is the same for everyone else. Do not worry, you will get one of the better dungeon rooms. Do you have any relatives here with you who may need to be notified for your absence? Nedek pulled her arms out of the guard's grips, putting on the most gruffest face she could. She slid a hand over her face, momentarily shocked as she felt the moustache and beard. She'd almost forgotten about those. She held up her palms towards them. I will work alone. There's no need for manacles, please. To answer your question, no. There is no one who would be looking for me. Not even a servant. Where I come from, it is not a custom to have one. The main guard nodded. They didn't take her arms again, but Neda could see they were vigilant and prepared to hold her if she tried to run. She wouldn't. So far, her plan went perfectly. Sitting in a dungeon room bored the life out of Neda. It had happened to her before. Even though she'd wanted it this time, the boredness didn't change. The guard hadn't been lying when he said they'd put her in one of the better rooms. 
Nidak had never heard of a dungeon with a variety of rooms, but Paralelo had proved before to be different in many ways. Her prison had a large, barred window, without glass, that looked out on an open, shaft-like hall, across which she could see other windows. There weren't many. Nidak suspected there must have a mirror system kept in place to provide these cells with light. The sun had gone down a while ago, but the dungeon hadn't grown dark. A different type of light had replaced the natural sun. It wasn't bright, but enough to prevent prisoners from sitting in the complete dark. Nidak had tried to look up and down the circular hall. It hadn't worked. Extensions above and below her window prevented her from seeing much. It didn't matter. She sat down on her bed. It wasn't merely a hard wooden plank like her previous dungeon experiences. This one had a soft stuffing on top, almost like a proper mattress, and sufficient blankets to keep her warm. There was a small, chest-high wall, hiding the chamber pot from the prison bars. It was the only place for privacy. Footsteps echoed, the sound getting stronger with each step. Nidak flipped the sheets open and got herself busy fluffing the pillows. They didn't fluff. She kept her facial expression indignant and frustrated. Two guards passed by, shining their lantern light briefly in her cell before continuing on. She heard them laugh about silly foreigner nobles who don't know the local laws. Before their voices faded away, one of them dropped the word, Gorwak. Nidak strained her ears, but couldn't hear more of what they said. Perhaps she should have been paying more attention to what they've been saying, instead of giving all her focus to undressing and stuffing her clothes underneath the bed sheets. The man's outfit she'd been wearing, including the hat and wig, hadn't only been chosen because it proclaimed her as an obvious outsider and disguised her as a man. It had also been chosen because it had also been chosen because of its bulkiness, perfect to use as a pretend sleeping form, not to mention the ability to wear other clothes underneath. When she was satisfied with the outline of a supposed figure under the sheets, she remembered the fake beard and moustache. Snorting quietly, she pulled those off, hiding them under the sheets too. She checked the hallway. No one there. She skipped and appeared outside of her cell. Keeping to the shadows, she moved through the hallways. The sleek black clothes she wore blended in nicely with the darkness. The hallways seemed to go in a circle, following the central shaft around which the cells were built. Most of them were empty. She returned to her own cell. But that wasn't on this level. Time to look further. An hour later, frustration overwhelmed every other emotion. She hadn't found even a clue of where Patat was kept. By then, she was sure she'd been in about every corner of the dungeons. She suspected there were some deeper parts of the dungeons, but she doubted Patat would be there. She tried following the guides for a while, hoping for a hint. The only thing that accomplished had been near discovery, when that unexpectedly turned and she had to skip away in a hurry. Sighing, she left the dungeons and headed into the castle. Perhaps they'd put him up as a display somewhere. Stalking around the richly carpeted corridors, she lost track of where she was. The castle's halls were like a labyrinth. She froze. Voices. She sneaked closer. The sounds were coming from behind double doors. One ajar. She popped her head through and almost choked. There was Batot in a cage in the middle of what Neda guessed as a throne room, with the presence of a large throne on a dais. In front of Batat, an old man of average height paced up and down. Except for an eye patch, he didn't have many special features. 
The large hall reverberated enough for Nadek to clearly hear both of their words. When the man spoke next, he gestured wildly with his hands, giving Nadek another feature of recognition. He missed several fingers. But that didn't cause her gasp. She recognized his voice and manner of speech. Her uncle. You have been listening to Nadek, Chapter 37, Laws and Rules. Narrated, adventured and lived through by myself, Nadek. Written in a better way than I can tell it by Esther Jeff. Don't go just yet. We've got bloopers coming up. Find us on Twitter at Astrid Jeff and at Nerek and Kitty. There had been no other way to enter or exit the day before. This whole area... It somewhat relieved the pressure Nerek felt on her surface. It somewhat relieved the pressure Nadek felt on her source. Fuck me. It felt good to... Are you knocking? Oh. Yes? Okay, go ahead. I'll just wait. Her complete outfit differed enough from the local males to explain... Her complete outfit differed... Differed? Is it differed or deferred? A complete outfit differed enough from the local males to exclaim her. I don't know what it is. Differed or deferred? Oh, internet to rescue. No, 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 not deferred. I need to know deferred. Not deferred. Is it deferred? Then? Please. Yeah. Pronounce this. Deferred. What? Deferred. What? Deferred. That doesn't even make any sense. Deferred. Deferred. <laughs> Fuck that. De- That's not it. What about this one? Deferred. Deferred. Wait. Deferred. Deferred. That's not. Deferred. That's just a different word. Deferred. Okay. Well, seems. It seems. I don't know. Deferred. <laughs> what is that? Deferred. 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 That's different. Deferred. 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 Fuck sake, I don't know. Deferred. <sighs> Alright, so what did you do? Yes. I should try not to go with deferred because deferred is not deferred. That's deferred? Deferred? Let's go for that. Okay, sweet. But there had been no point in carrying it along, as the guards might be taking it off her when they caught her. When they caught, caught her. But there had been no point in carrying it along. What? No. She lifted the red apple out of her pocket and took a bite, nearly eating. <laughs> She held up her pal. The guard hadn't been lying when he, lying. <laughs> the guard hadn't been lying when they said what? What am I doing? It was the only prey. The fuck am I doing? Not to mention the ability. The, the sleek black clothes he wore. It didn't even make sense. With the presence of a large throne on a dais, with the presence of a large, du- with the presence of a large throne on a dais. Oh shit! How do you pronounce that? Dais, 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 dais. Why is everything so difficult? Dais. 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 Okay. Dais. 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 Sounds a strange. What a strange word. Anyways. Sweet. Uh, 